Executive Director Kelly Packer from the Association of Idaho Cities joins me now to discuss new legislation that's intended to provide property tax relief by changing the way public defense is funded in Idaho. Kelly, thanks for joining me today. Logan, thank you for having me. Um, so we'll talk about public defense in a second, but stepping back, big picture to start, how did this legislative session treat the cities? You know, it was a, a, a real uphill climb for cities, to be honest. We only brought one piece of personal legislation. However, there were 62 bills that we ended up having to field in one form or another, whether we supported it or opposed them. Um, there was a lot of work that we ended up doing, but for the most part, I think that we came out um, fairly well intact. Um, we, we had a few slices um, taken off of us, but for the most part, we, we fared pretty well. And we had you on the show um, a number of weeks ago, and we talked about kind of some early proposals to use the, the tax relief fund for some different projects. Um, those, those early bills raised some concerns from the cities. Where, where have we ended up now at the end of the session? Well, you know, they still used, we were really concerned, our most, our, probably our biggest concern when I was last on was that Wayfair fund. Um, you know, trying to get those funds coming through the same distribution as we currently receive um, from just the bricks and mortar businesses. Mm -hmm. um, that is going to happen with um, a seven, the House Bill 735 as amended in the Senate. Um, it's going to happen basically at the same timeline it would have, and that's wonderful. Um, but there's some caveats um, around it. For the most part, we are happy um, because we hope to see some um, increases in revenues that will help us to be able to decrease property tax reliance mm -hmm. moving forward. And for our viewers, um, the Wayfair Fund is the, the tax relief fund is when you pay sales tax, if it's in a brick and mortar store, it goes through the distribution formula to local governments versus if you buy something online, it goes into the special bucket. Right. And so right. that um, tax relief bucket is being wound down in 2024, is that correct? That's correct, yes. And then it will go to, um, through the regular formula, which means that 11.5%, which goes to locals, will um, we'll see a little bit of an increase after the first couple of years. Right, after the first couple of years. So that gets us to the public defense bill because part of the way that the, the big public defense project is being funded is from that sales tax formula. So can you walk me through um, what changes are being made and specifically what the cities are contributing? You bet. So 735 um, was proposed in House Revenue Tax um, and the cities immediately opposed it. And there was a couple of reasons for that. First and foremost is that we were not part of the conversations in drafting and, and building that legislation. And yet we were going to have major impacts to our revenue streams um, through the legislation that was being proposed. Um, 735 was going to create a funding stream for the public defense needs in the state. And we as cities recognize that that was a huge need. There's a lo current lawsuit in place, for example. And we believe that all of us, from the state through the counties to the cities, should partner together and be good partners. We just did not believe it should come out of the 11.5% local piece that the um, counties and cities currently use to help offset property tax needs. Um, but that's where the state insisted it come out of. Um, initially, they were gonna have the cities pay 50% of the freight. We definitely oppose that because we don't provide 50% of the footprint um, for the cost. Right, those indigent services for poor and needy people for whether or it's public defense, medical Either or one. public defense, that largely comes at the county level. Absolutely, and in fact, constitutionally and statutorily, it's the state and the county's responsibility for the public defense needs and, and so not cities. In your conversation with lawmakers, why did they choose to, to have you guys also pay into that? Um, they didn't want it coming out of their state funds. Plain and simple, they did not want it coming out of the general funds because there were there were already fed there were already excuse me other state priorities um, that were going to be used for the um, from the surplus and and other revenues that they had at the general fund level. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so like we said, a lot of the the indigent services, whether it's medical or public defense, um, these are levied at the county level. So. With this shift, what are the cities going to see in exchange for what you're paying into this new program? Really nothing, to be honest, other than maybe a healthier public defense system, but that's yet to be seen because they decided to pass a piece of legislation um, funding a public defense system that doesn't really exist. They don't know what it's gonna look like yet. Um, so basically we're gonna pay $16 million um, from the city level um, to help fund the public defense system without even knowing if that's how much it, it's gonna cost, right? Um, or what it's going to look like. And, and we think that's somewhat problematic. We also weren't thrilled with um, having to pay the 16 million because as I mentioned, 
they're not currently our responsibility, but they had done, the bill sponsors had done some research and they said that 38% of city violations that were written um, by city law enforcement actually hit the public defense system. Um, we did our own research and showed that while that number was accurate and true, 93.43% of those violations were actual enforcement for state and county laws. Um, so they weren't even city in code enforcement needs. It's so the city carrying out what the state and counties require. Right, but we are still going to pick up 38% of the, the expense um, because we wanted to be good partners in, in the need that our state has. So. And then another piece of legislation that was passed into law this year also gives cities the ability to issue property tax rebates, kind of in the same style as the uh, income tax rebates that the legislature has done. Um, do you know, are many cities planning to take advantage of that provision? To be honest, Logan, not very many of the cities are gonna have the abil ability to do that. Um, Why is that? Um, I know that some legislators think that um, cities are rich with money right now because of ARPA funds and now the Investment Act funds that are going to be coming their way. But there's already a huge overwhelming need for those funds to be used for streets, water, sewer. We have a lot of aging infrastructure in our state that the cities are responsible for and those monies are going to be used for that. Um, for example, um, an, an average water or sewer project cost $16 million, $16.1 million. And there's only two cities in our, all of our 199 that got that or more. Um, the majority of them maybe got a million or less. Some of them only got a couple hundred thousand. So for legislators that, to think that the funds that are coming to the cities um, is going to create a situation where they're going to just have excess cash laying around is really a misnomer, it's just not true. And then looking forward, now that we've reached Tiny Die, uh, with redistricting that has happened, there's going to be a whole bunch of turnover in the legislature. Um, with this public defense bill, they set up a funding mechanism, but not necessarily the public defense system. That's on the upcoming legislature to figure out. So what should the next batch of lawmakers prepare to address next year from the city's perspective? I think that needs to be the number one priority. And I would hope that even the existing ones, whether they're coming back or not, would work in the interim. To, to meet that, that need. Um, as I mentioned, we passed legislation. In fact, I asked that in testimony. Why are we passing a funding stream for something that doesn't exist, for something we don't even know what it's going to look like? Um, and so my, my suggestion is that that becomes the number one priority for the legislators coming back, is that they figure out that system and get it done. All right, Kelly Packer with the Association of Idaho Cities, thank you so much.